everybody, my name is Rose Nelson. I'm the Education Director for the Mona Lake Committee. And I'm Nora Livingston, the Lead Naturalist Guide. And we're here first and foremost to be grateful, to say thank you uh, for you folks who are here watching our first live stream of the lake. And especially during this time of uncertainty, thank you so much for staying home. And Nora and I are grateful to be here in the basin. Uh, we're also very, very thankful for our friends and members who are supporting us to continue our work to protect, restore, and educate about this magical, beautiful place that we call home. We at the committee are now doing this work from home, uh, at a distance from each other, trying to stay safe, <laughs> high five, <laughs> and uh, really make sure that we can continue to do the work um, without jeopardizing ourselves or our community or our members. So we really want to continue to get outside and bring you these experiences so you can stay connected to the lake and experience some of the beauty here that you may not be able to get in this time of shelter in place or staying home. Um, so we are happy to be able to bring you some of the beauty that we have here. Yeah, so be on the lookout via our uh, Facebook, Instagram, website for different uh, virtual excursions like we're doing now. We'll be down here at South Tupa giving virtual tours, uh, watching the birds come in and migrate into the Mono Basin. The plants start to leaf out, the flowers come up. We'll do our best to bring all the magic that's happening to you. Yeah, so stay tuned. And so for today, we are down at the lakeshore wanting to bring you some uh, tranquil views and inspiring quotes about Mono Lake, and then we will take it from there. So, all right. <laughs> I'm going to start off uh, with a quote by Gray Brecken, who was instrumental in the beginnings of the Mono Lake Committee and uh, a person who loves Mono Lake very much <clears throat> and has some very beautiful words to say about it. So this uh, quote is in the Mono Lake Guidebook, a self-guided tour of the history, geology, wildlife, and future of Mono Lake, written by David Gaines, the founder of the Mono Lake Committee, um, back in the 80s. <clears throat> and so this quote from Gray Brecken. Whether Mono Lake has a consciousness will remain one of its mysteries, but Mono endows its friends with awareness, for we have all had to learn from it. Mono has taught us to see the world anew, to accept and perceive beauties we had been unaware of, and to ask questions whose answers may be far from simple or comfortable. On the solitude of its beaches, at dawn and at dusk, we have learned to listen and to watch and to live quietly with ourselves. But mostly we have learned to live with other beings which we cannot use, but whose mere presence enhances our daily existence. Mono doesn't ask simple questions. It demands an examination of the inner and outer worlds which constitute human awareness. And that is why it is the best kind of friend. And that is why we cannot let it die.
There rests upon the desert plain what appears to be a wide sheet of burnished metal. So even and brilliant is his surface. No prosaic description can portray the grandeur of 50 miles of rugged mountains rising beyond a placid lake in which each sharply cut peak, each shadowy precipice, and each purple gorge is reflected. That's a quote by Israel Russell, a geologist who came and studied Mono Lake in the 1800s. I don't know if you can see, but there are two Canada geese right across this closest bit of lake foraging on the lake shore. They're making little honking noises, quiet honking noises to tell each other where they are.
We aren't sure if you could hear it, but we just had a flock of California gulls fly over calling and calling and calling their high-pitched... You can't even imitate it. <laughs> <laughs> but they have returned for their col to their colony for the summer, and they will be nesting on the islets behind Nejet and it's exciting to hear them again. It's been a, a quiet winter without them. So another uh, reading from the Mona Lake guidebook. This is a paragraph about Tufa, since we're looking at Tufa right now. Mono is no ordinary lake. Its dramatic setting, saline, alkaline water, and vast flocks of birds set it apart from any place on Earth. So do the strange but delicate mineral formations, called tufa, that grace its shores. These improbable sculptures, which seem to belong to another planet, have been variously described as giant towers of cemented cauliflower, white columns and elaborate facades like those of the ruined temples of Greece, and science fiction art, the cities of some intelligent and artistic extraterrestrial termite. Their artistry is unrivaled. In other alkaline lakes, such as Nevada's Pyramid Lake, tufa has formed mounds, veneers, and pavements, but not the mushrooming rocks, knobby spires, and pillared structures that so enchant Mono Lake's visitors. All were deposited by freshwater springs bubbling up through Mono's carbonated brine and brine-saturated sands. Marooned on shore by receding waters, they seem like the bones of the lake. Tufa, like stalactites and stalagmites, is composed of calcium carbonate, the principal mineral in limestone. Its formation is basically a chemical process, although algae may influence form and texture. Even at extremely low concentrations, calcium and carbonate combine into a solid and precipitate out of solution as calcite or aragonite. In Mono's brine, calcium in spring water combines with carbonates in the lake water, forming tufa. Of us, the, for those of you who have just joined us, we're going to do a quick introduction again. My name is Rose Nelson. I am the Education Director for the Mona Lake Committee. And I'm Nora Livingston, the Lead Naturalist Guide. And we are expressing our gratitude to be here at the lake and be in the basin during this time of uncertainty. And we're thanking you too for staying at home, keeping our community safe, keeping your community safe, and uh, tuning in to bring you Mona Lake today. We're also really thankful to our friends and members who are continuing to support us in this hard time. Uh, your support makes the education, protection, and restoration of the Mono Basin and of Mono Lake real. So thank you so much. We at the Mono Lake Committee are taking this very seriously. We've all transitioned to uh, work from home, but we do want to um, continue to go outside and bring some of this magical basin to you while you're at home. And uh, we will do our, do our best to bring you beautiful scenes from Mono Lake, from the Jeffrey Pine Forest, from pretty much anywhere we can find that's beautiful, which is all of it. <laughs> and we'll hopefully can bring it to you. And we also want to hear from you. If you have any uh, suggestions or recommendations or requests of things you want to see from the Mono Basin, please comment on this live video stream and we will try our best to bring that to you um, from here in the Mono Basin to your home. But keep an eye out on Facebook and Instagram and our website as we continue to um, 
produce these live videos and also some photographs and video clips to bring the basin to you. And uh, we will show you scenes of the basin as it continues into spring of birds splitting in the trees and singing. Um, ooh, there's a meadow lark flying over us oh. right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Speaking of birds. Um, and of two tours down by the lake. We'll do our best to, to bring the beauty to you. What other birds have we seen today, Nora? Lots. Yeah. There's Canada geese right over there. We saw a Say's Phoebe perched on a tupa tower right next to us as we walked in, giving a, a sad little call. It likes to nest here in the tupa every year. Um, we've had some California gulls fly over, and there are some eared grebes far, far in the distance behind us. And, uh, and the swallows too, right? Oh yeah, we had tree swallows <laughs> fly over. So spring is, is really here, and uh, we are excited to get to bring some of that to you. Thanks for watching. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to read a quote by Gray Brecken, who was instrumental in the beginnings of the Mono Lake Committee and who is um, very much a true monophile. And he wrote this beautiful paragraph. Um, I read it at the beginning, but for those of you who missed it, I feel like it is um, very important in these times. Whether Mono Lake has a consciousness will remain one of its mysteries. But Mono endows its friends with awareness, for we have all had to learn from it. Mono has taught us to see the world anew, to accept and perceive beauties we had been unaware of, and to ask questions whose answers may be far from simple or comfortable. On the solitude of its beaches, at dawn and at dusk, we have learned to listen and to watch and to live quietly with ourselves. But mostly we have learned to live with other beings which we cannot use, but whose mere presence enhances our daily existence. Mono doesn't ask simple questions. It demands an examination of the inner and outer worlds which constitute human awareness. And that is why it is the best kind of friend. And that is why we cannot let it die. We're going to get a little closer to the water now, so pardon the shakiness as I walk that way.
our first Mono Moment our, via Facebook Live and our virtual event. I hope this brought some tranquility and inspiration to your day today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your support. Truly, it means the world to us. So keep in touch and keep connected and we'll uh, see you here at the lake.